Hey everyone, how's it going? This is John DaCosta, aka DC DaCosta DC Comics, aka Facebook villain, aka blue collar reviewer. That's a new one. AKA bathroom guy. AKA shimmel my ass. Anyways, uh, I've been watching all your videos this week, guys, and I uh, I noticed a little one. Everyone's a little deflated, a little negative, a little inebriated, <laughs> basically feeling under the weather. And uh, I can relate. I can relate to everyone as well, because just just about just because yesterday. There was another incident at my store involving my bin. Um, if you guys remember last week, there was a book in my bin that I dropped several times already. It keeps on reappearing. And uh, But what happened yesterday was totally different. It was totally opposite. Actually, my bin was empty. So uh, I was a little upset. I don't know if it's because he knows I'm on YouTube and he watched my channel or heard the comment so um, yeah so I go up to him like hey uh, what's going on mom why is my bin empty and like the guy just like looks back at me and says oh I'm a little I'm, I'm a little chuck I'm chucking at it I'm still chucking at it <laughs> I'm like dude the only thing you're chucking at is that Big Mac on your desk uh, I, I have no idea what that meant I don't know what he meant so I stormed out of there. Of course, I grabbed the books off the shelf and left. And I'm just, you know, at a crossroads right now. It's like, you know, I already drive 30 minutes to that store. Um, I do have a local comic book shop that I don't go to anymore. Mainly because I find the guys in there a little pretentious. And I just feel awkward in there. And um, I don't think they like me too much. And I figured out why. It's, I think it's because I brush my teeth and I comb my hair. So, uh, basically, yeah, I don't know what to do. You know, maybe you should watch a Poet Skinny video on positive thoughts uh, before I make this video, because it might, I might come across negative. So, uh, yeah, I should have done that before. Anyways, um, you know what? My dad always tells me when I feel something like this, he always says, uh, you know what, John? There's always a silver lining. And that's it. There you go, Matt. Enjoy Canadian Club. No, I'm just kidding, buddy. <laughs> I love your videos, man. They're so awesome. That video was awesome yesterday. Oh, it's hilarious. Okay. The books. Wake Me Up When September Ends. DC 52, Issue Zeros. Nightwing, Red Hood, and Justice League. Okay. Do this really quick. I only got a few minutes. Nightwing, your basic origin story. Dick Grayson, Haley Circus. Uh, it's the rebooted 52-ish version, um, shows his parents wearing this, uh, fabulous display of John Travolta pop-up collars. They look like the old Nightwing. <laughs> That's their getup, which was interesting. Um, the book is really, you know, it's only $2.99. I like Robins, so I picked it up. Uh, what I really liked about this book was the banter between Alfred and, uh, Dick Grayson. Um, it, they were mainly talking about Dick Grayson was comparing himself to Batman, how you know, they kind of had the same circumstances, you know, um, they both want to avenge their parents' deaths. Uh, Dick Grayson, of course, started off because of uh, Zuko. And um, it's interesting because uh, he, um, he uh, kind of sees that, you know what, I haven't visited my parents at the graveyard. I'm, I'm, it's, it's bad, I feel guilty, and there is Bruce Wayne, Batman, who sets his clock to, exact, to the back cave to the exact same time as his parents' death, you know, always visiting his parents' tombstones, and uh, Alfred basically tells him, you know, what you're doing isn't wrong, um, you're moving on, you know, uh, that's how you grieve, some people don't know how to grieve, and, uh, and it's probably not the right way to grieve, what you're doing is you're moving past it. Part of grieving is getting on with your life. Uh, so it's basically that sort of banter back and forth. Uh, still Tom DeFalco, um, Kyle Higgins. Uh, it's for $2.99, why not? 
I just wanted something to read this week. Okay, second one, another. I'm gonna bore you with another Red Hood out, uh, another Robin. This is Jason Todd, Red Hood and the Outlaws. I always, I, 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 I like the Jason Todd Robin storyline. I know it was brief in the Batman series, but more I became more intrigued right after the Hush storyline, where Clayface masked himself as uh, Jason Todd, and that opened up a can of worms. For Bruce Wayne, I just found it fascinating. Ever since then, I've been more hooked with Jason Todd as the Red Hood. So uh, this book reads very depressing, actually, guys. <laughs> uh, the panels, the drawings by Pascual Ferry. I th I don't think he's the original artist for Red Hood. I'm not sure. I have to check on that. But um, the panels are drawn kind of like snapshots in time. Uh, your typical basic origin. Um, he comes across very sar sarcastic in his narrative, putting his parents down, uh, the low lives that they were. And uh, yeah, it, it reads depressing how pathetic um, Jason Todd's childhood was. And talks about the affinity he has for Batman. And uh, talks about his last moments before he died, how he knows Batman was, gonna, was there to save his life and... He made it hard for Batman to find him because he just found out that his mom was alive and took off. Uh, of course, what's a Jason Todd origin without the Joker, the Joker art of him bashing Jason Todd's head in with the crowbar? And I also, uh, there was something at the end that I found a little cheesy, it looked a little rushed. It, I didn't like it at all. It's just a little... I think it's a backstory, a Joker back, uh, it's weird. <laughs> it's Basically, it's Joker saying, hey, I'm responsible for Red Hood. I'm the one who drugged his mother and faked her death with this plant extract root. Like, it's sick. It's like that Super Friends Joker type thing, you know? He's taking credit for creating Jason Todd. Don't like it at all. I, I didn't like it at all. But two ninety nine, that was just... Two panels in the back, two pages in the back. But two ninety nine, it's a Robin, Red Hood, Jason Todd. I don't care. I'll pick it up, even though if it doesn't make me popular, I don't give a shit. Justice League number zero. Shazam is our hero. I like I like Shazam. Uh, I I was reading the Billy Batson backstory. I really liked it in the Justice League issues. Jeff Johns, Gary Frank. Gary, actually, the only thing that saved this issue was. Uh, is uh, Gary Frank's art. So what the hell? So yeah, uh, it's it's not bad, you know. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Alan Moore makes appearance in a, a cameo appearance in this book. Um, it's basically Billy Batson goes to the wizard and says, and the wizard doesn't find him worthy to be Shazam, and then he convinces this almighty wizard that he is good to be Shazam and then the wizard says uh, okay uh, sure so he turns him into Shazam a lot of a lot of grung, grung, grung sound effects and every page is like grung, 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 grung. that's that's all it that's all it read so he changes into Shazam and uh, the only thing he you know it's like oh Forget about my six-pack and my bodacious biceps and my magical, mystical powers. I'm old. I'm old. That's all he's, like, really hung up on is that he's old and he has pubes. That's, that's what I got out of it. Eh, whatever. It's, um, it was cool. The art was all right. And the art, sorry, the, the art was, I found it the best. That's what saved the book. And uh, there's a little, at the end, there's something about Pandora and she can't open up her box. And then uh, after that, there's a little thing that leads to a lot of questions. Yeah, questions appear. See my Alan Moore cameo questions segment? Eh. No, you don't get it? Okay, good. All right. Uh, that's it for this video. Can't shoot over that for now. I'll do a part two if you guys are still interested. Then check it out because this is part one and I got more to come. So see you later, guys. And uh, I shorted.